Man, it's been hard. It's hard out here for a brother, man. It's hard. And now I got an HD camera that's showing that I got a tan line. And I'm so ashamed. How can a man as black as me have a tan line? What is going on with the sun that a black man like me got a tan line? It don't make no sense. No sense at all. Get off my phone, bro. You know I don't know how to get off my phone. We will be taking calls on this show this today. This is my fourth take. And we are up live on Giami Journey Radio because I'm trying to record all of this at one time. So I'm sorry, Facebook. So here we go. We're going to end that. And we're gonna, now we are up and live. Once again, I'm trying to kick it live with my family. I want to thank everybody for coming out. I thank everybody for coming out. I got some little bit of sound effects, right? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're trying to do it here at Gianni Journey, right? So um, now, I want to do this as well. That's right, that's right. We are live. Right now it's me and Gina because Sasha is mad at me. Right? So um on take two, I was on and we was doing the show and then Sasha went on and tried to get smart about one of my um, one of her elders, one of my one of one of fellow nation girls, right? You know what I'm saying? Just just saying that, you know, she's doing a little girl talk. And one of the things that we have to start getting our kids to understand, man, is that you can't just say everything, right? You know what I'm saying? Something needs to stay in your mouth, right? So I need to make sure that she understands that, right? I want to pin this comment, right? She needs to understand that. And, you know, because a lot of times what I'm noticing is that a lot of kids that come into the school say things because they came from a situation where everything was cute, right? You know what I'm saying? They didn't know, you know, oh, it's so cute. No, that shit's not cute. And we need to be honest about that, man. You know what I'm saying? We need to really start checking our kids about appropriate, right? It's a culturally appropriate place for children. And, and a lot of times, it's not getting smart with adults, right? It's not being insulting. You know what I'm saying? Every now and then, you can let that slide because it is funny sometimes. But you, we need to be willing to check our children. Now, I want to welcome you once again to Jimmy Journey. This is the fourth take, right? I mean, the afternoon. I want to send shots out to Brother Shaka Sion Hasbury, who has joined the show um, uh, today, my brother. I am trying. I am trying. I am trying. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. But I'm going to try, right? I'm trying to take calls on this show, right? Now, what just happened is I turned through on my Bluetooth, and... um. All right, cool. It didn't connect over here, but it connected with my phone. So maybe I will be able to take calls at this time. I'm not 100% sure, but we will see. All right, now. Now, what I want to do today is, one, we're going to sample the the, the uh, Giamme Journey root drink. Right? I ain't calling it root beer because it's not strong enough to be root beer. It, it, I don't want to add all the molasses to get that color because we got enough sugar going in our community. If you want that type of sugar, you can go get it. Gina was on the show with me, but she decided to go elsewhere, so I'm going to drink up some water. Have right now, I'm uh, I'm watching this one dude on YouTube, and he came up with a term. Uh-oh. I think Brother Shaka has called in. Hold on. Let's see. Um, join this conference. Let's see if we can get it. I'm going to use the vice number. All right. I'm calling in. Let's see what happens. Oh, 
my 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 how are you doing uh, can you hear me brother Shaka? Yes, sir. How you doing? i'm doing good i wonder if the people out there can hear you but we're about to do our daily toast uh first make sure you drink your water the rules are very simple we can't toast our ancestors if we are not healthy so i encourage everybody get you some water and if you're a grown man or woman please do not be drinking when we salute my ancestors out of a plastic cup you know what i'm saying you got a cup made out of wood you got a cup made out of stone you got a cup made out of glass you got a cup made out of metal but do not do not step to my show with a plastic cup why not plastic because plastic is for children well brother i tell you drinking water out of plastic cup you are correct and i haven't come up with a quick response for that one. but how you doing today brother shaka don't you drink some water with me my friend Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, man, I was actually thinking about coming up, coming to Columbus this weekend for the holiday. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, Gina's joining us for a drink too. So, uh, hey, how you son doing? I see, I, I see, I see you getting them a little bit more um, involved on the Facebook, on the Facebook live, man. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. You gotta start turning our children to start between, between, between your. Between your child, uh, uh, our, our cousin Dame Lee's uh, child, and, and my children, dude, we got us a little empire. We just got to become a little more Joe Jackson like. <laughs> you know what? That's that's really what's been on my mind lately, man. You know, my son uh, has started first grade. We his second week in first grade, and his teacher was was truly concerned because he protested against. You know the, the structure, and uh, you know, and, and, and the order that she was trying to establish. And um, I kind of felt some way about that because my son's a little me. You know what I mean? Right. I understand. You know, I don't want to well, put it like this. I don't expect him to understand. Uh, you know how I protest. It's kind of core. He's showing me himself that hey, you know what? This is not for me. Okay. Oh, um, Kind of put me go ahead. No, go I mean because the, the issue is he's been sitting around listening to your conversation. I mean it's just like me, you know, just like me expecting my kids not to cuss in the class. They sit around and hear me cuss so shit. Every now and then they're gonna cuss. So I'm not them sir and they hear the conversation and they know that the education is leading them nowhere. They that they, and they know that we're sending them to these institutions because we have to, because we have a legal obligation. If we do not send our children to these schools, I mean, because, you know, he, he knows it. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, he's going to rebel. But go ahead. You was, I mean, go on, continue on with your thoughts. I'm going to hear where you're going with this Joe Jackson, Joe Jackson piece. Yeah, because I, I, I said to one of my friends the other day, you know what? Uh, maybe I need to, you know, maybe I need to be more like Joe Jackson. And, uh, you know, he was like, you know, you know what you mean when you say Joe Jackson? I'm like, man, you can lie. You know, Michael Jackson is his hero. Michael Jackson, he understands the relationship. You understand? And so uh, I asked Sarah one night, said, man, you know, you know what Michael Jackson had to do to become a superstar? Do you know the work that it took from the time that he was your age on to be that great that early? I was like, yo, sometimes... His daddy had to put his butt in his ass. You know? And people look at his dad like he's bad because he had to do that. I don't want to have to be that too. And do you want to be a superstar like Michael Jackson? He said, yes. I was like, are you willing to do the work? He said, yes. I said, do I have to be Joe Jackson? He said, no. <laughs> hey, man, hey. You know what? Because now, this is what I was going to talk about today as far as the small discussion. I'm trying to mail everything together. Um, you remember yeah. C at say what's up, man? Uh, you Z, you you remember Z, right? Yeah. Right. Z is setting up. Z is setting up. Uh, um, uh, put that down, Jim. You know what to call. Z is setting up a studio within the she shop so that we can start doing video production. Right. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so that's, so I'm trying to mail everything together. So I got to start bringing all my shows together and stuff like that so I can save time. But what I was going to talk about today is we have to realize 
they're boring. And, and we got to ingrain this in ourselves. We got to start ingraining this into our children, getting to the Joe Jackson thing. Boring is the new sex. Right? I'm listening to this dude. I can't remember his name online. But he brought this to my attention. He said, boring is the new sexy. And I'm like, damn, I'm going to have to think about that shit. Because really, when you want to become good at something, when you want to master something, you got to do the shit over and over again. Like when you started learning how to play the key, you had to learn how to play that shit. It was boring. It became boring. It became tedious. And a lot of our kids are not used to being bored. You know what I'm saying? And, and being forced to practice. But in order to be a master at something, you have to be able to embrace the boring aspects of the practice, right? I mean, I'm able to get up here, and, and you're able to get up on, on, on you on Facebook and YouTube because we've been practicing talking for years. You know what I'm saying? When nobody's around, you, like myself, probably talk. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting, I'm, I'm sitting in the motherfucking club practicing, right? I, I do it, and, and it's, it, it gets boring. But a lot of us, we don't want to be bored. We don't want to, we don't, we don't understand it. We don't understand that it's the boring task that makes us great. It's being able to push through that boringness. Like my daughter right here, look. Can't stand being bored. Look, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to get Joe Jackson on, on Facebook. Uh-oh. 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 Ten thousand hours, yeah, ten thousand, ten thousand hours, hours. Four years. Now, what I have to say about that is that we look at things that we are competent in, you and I, and because of our age, and experience, we have to be able to do that. Now, you know, I have to say that I think that we're doing well in that that you put in, there's a process to that time because there's a there's, there's a way that you can practice wrong. Oh yeah. And when you you understand what I mean? And when that becomes habit, it's harder to break than anything because at the end of the day, you are your greatest nemesis. And that's what I see happen a lot is that some people don't realize it, but you hear a young, motivated person talking as if you can't tell them anything because they already know their past. If you can't tell them anything to help shape uh, their character or, or, or uh, their personality because they've already been there, done that. There's nothing new under the sun. People will close you out because they trust their process. And then, so we were like that at one point in time, brother. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and to the degree, I still am. Hey, shit. Me too. You know? I mean, and, but, you know, but like I said, that's part of the mastery because part of mastery doesn't mean that you're doing perfect practice all the time, but you do practice. And what that means is sometimes you've got to shut out the world so that you can continue doing what you do. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like, you because sometimes yeah. if, you, if you open up and you listen to all of the comments and everything that everybody is saying, Right, you will not make progress. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I mean, but you know, like, but then that comes with like being humble. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, we, we we're not putting our being humble. Now, my daughter is getting bored right now. She wants to do toast. So we gonna do this toast real quick. Hopefully, you can finish your water. Huh? All right, let's finish the water. Y'all drink your water with us. Mm. You want to try the root drink? Is is Ambrosia Day, family? You want to try your root drink, or you want to try lemon lime? All right. I just bottled this one up. I tried to do it in the first session. I got to go and bottle up. Now, Gina, this is kind of strong. All right. Are you sure? Yeah, that one is too. But this one is different. You, I mean, I don't know if you're gonna like the roots. I just put a little bit. All right. Make sure y'all got y'all health drink with us, family. We gonna toast our ancestors. Uh, yeah, ain't close drinking yet. All right, so you remember how to do the toast again? All right, who we toast first? Yeah. All right, 
I do it for you. You talk to the Creator, or whatever name you choose, Creator. You talk to the Creator, and what we say, Gina? That's right. And then we move to our personal ancestors, right? You're going to talk to our personal ancestors. You're going to talk to our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our aunts, our uncles, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, and our cousins, right? Our nieces and our nephews, all those people around us that made it possible for us to be who we are. Those people that took the time to mold us, and those people who took time to challenge us. We want to lift up our glasses and salute all those people who have made their journey to the ancestral realm. We want to lift them up. We want to say, Shay, and now take this time to call some of your personal ancestors. So the shots you on the line, you can start off with an ancestor that you want to call on. Ashay. Anybody online, you can type in the name and I will salute them for you. I shout out for you. Or you can call in at 614-556-4535. Don't be shy. Because when you was hungry, your parents were not shy in feeding you, right? We need to go on and feed our ancestors, right? We forgot this help for Africa, so I'm going to call on my family like Miles Brown, Miss Ann, Robert right? Tex and the David, I'm a Brown Senior, Rosie Lee Tilly, George and William Walker. Ooh, Mama Malika. You never even met Mama Malika, right? That's good. How did you know Mama Malika? Wow. Wow. And you know what's crazy? If it weren't for Mama Malika, I wouldn't have her. Ah, so we're going to do my Malika. And I have been neglecting my Malika in the ah, It's incredible how our ancestors work, family. She never met my Malika. But if I did not know my Malika, I would not have her. Because my Malika made it possible for me to meet her mama. This is, so we lift up our glass to our ancestors. And we're going to do a special salute to a special meal by the name of my Malika. Wait a minute. You know, it's not Christopher. So hold on, I'm sticking on this Mama Malika stage. So we can also do Mama Malika. As a matter of fact, I think Mama Malika is supposed to be you, Shaka. You know what? I think you're right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's incredible how the ancestors work. So we lift up, lift up our glass to Mama Malika, right? Listen, Mama Malika was so cold, I saw Mama Malika. With absolutely no money, struggling, take about 15 kids to gun. Anybody with, huh? That was the third time she did it. Let's be clear, that was the third time that she did it. You know what I'm saying? So she was able, I mean, she showed me that you can make shit happen. We go off, right? So we're going to do Mama Malika Day. Today is Mama Malika Day. We toast and we say what? I say. I say from there, we move to the present moment. Today is Kaumba. We toast our creativity, right? Creative how our ancestors, like our ancestors, to speak to our children sometimes, right? So we lift up our glass to where our true power is, the power is in the moment. We toast and we say what, G? I say, now we salute our children, we toast our children, our children's children, going to infinity because everything that we think, say, and do, everything that we build is for them, right? So we got to respect some of the processes, even though the deal, some of the processes sometimes move slow and get on our goddamn nerves because it's that slowness sometimes that can provide us with protection. But we pray that we are wise enough to know that when we need to break some of these processes to get shit done, right? And we don't want to do it all the time. So you just say, this is when I met you as well. Ooh, so my Malika introduced me to um, uh, Ms. Jill Jackson. And as a matter of fact, my Malika helped me meet um, Ms. Stephanie M. Jackson. God damn. She happened to be online. So shout out once again to our ancestor, Mama Malika, right? I got to remember that on, 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 on a more daily basis. Now, um, so we toast our children, our children's children, on to finish, right? Last but not least, I toast you. I toast you, family. I toast you, right? Any issue that you have, now is the time, is now is the time. 
You throw them out. We want to send shots out to those individuals down there in Houston. Who you want to, what you want to toast, you know? You got anything you want to toast? Don't be shy enough. Come on, man. Oh, clear. Oh, okay. Okay. See, so what? All right, cool. All right. You told him, you say, Ashe, come on, toast. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. We wish you peace, power, joy, and 100 years, family. Remember, boring is the new sex. You know what I'm saying? I'm trusted. I'm going to taste this. This is the first time. You ready? You ready, Gina? This is the room. Not bad. You're not gonna like it. This is a good health drink right here. Yes, sir. Second. Um, Brother Kwame, I got somebody calling in. I have a call in line at 614-556-4535. Um, he said it's kind of fuzzy, so he really couldn't hear you that well. Um, but go ahead. Keep on. I'm back to you. So, okay. So, once again, a lot of us are in place in our art where we like to keep it real. We like an opportunity to say what it is that is real in our lives. But when we plant that seed in the ears and the hearts of others, are we willing as artists to accept the responsibility of how that person has evolved through our influence, through our art? Am 
Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, in entertainment especially, if you create an artistic piece that moves people through anger, through sadness, of course, now for me, we can, we can use those motion transform but is that what we're doing are we conscious of what our art does to people when we put in for in for example one word black or blackness are we conscious of what that triggers the ears and the hearts of others when they experience blackness because everyone is not aligned with that concept the way that you're aligned with that concept. Not everyone is passionate about that concept the way that you are. So are you appealing to the people that you want? Are you putting the message out that or, or this sentiment out there that you intend it to? And how can we realize this thing if not through community? So, care to respond at all? Well, hey, now, one of the things Brother Kwame picked up, he said breaking the code of the emotion. Um, we had we recently had a, work, a workshop where um, we learned how to, to kind of break the code. And I wanted to um, bring, I wanted to, so I want to send a shout out to Brother Kwame. I wanted to see, make sure I brought the speaker a little bit closer so they can hear what you were saying because he really tried to listen in and help dissect some of the stuff you're saying. Now, one thing we have to do, have to be willing to do, is take responsibility for what we're trying to communicate. A lot of times we just throw shit out there and think that it's okay and do not take responsibility for it, right? But I do agree with you. We have to ask ourselves to get the question. Um, are you hearing what are, are they hearing what I'm trying to say? And we need to become creative in how we bring it across so we make sure we get the right ideas across. Because on the last show that I just did for a uh, 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 for, uh, tribal quotes, we talked about ideas and the importance of ideas and changing lives in evolution and revolution, right? Now, if people are not getting, getting the ideas in the way that I'm trying to communicate them, then I have to come up with a better method of doing it. I have to access, as you said, that creative aspect, the creative spark within me to get the ideas across, right? So I've got to take responsibility for that. So like I said, now, with us, as far as the conscious community, are we being creative enough so that people are hearing what the hell we're trying to say? Because obviously, in, in many ways, we may not be as being as effective as some of these other fools out here, right? I mean, I don't know if I'm going in the right direction. I don't know if I'm hitting on what you what you what you're trying to reach. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. So, um, but yeah, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. That's out the brother Larry Hickman, Larry Jackson. What's up? How you doing, man? Long time to see. Shouts out to Brother Kwame. Shouts out to Brother Omar. I'm going to, uh, what time are you going to be over at that studio? Because I'm going to stop through and holler at you. Um, shouts out to our nation builder, Jill Jackson. Stop. Shouts out to Stephanie Jackson. Shouts out to our Brother Shaka, of course, who's on the line. I want to thank everybody for taking the time for, uh, for tuning in. And I want to thank Gina for um hanging in there even though why is you hanging on me like that little lady what no oh oh you know it's no beer in this oh, oh you drunk cool no because because if you was i was about to drink some more all right this is the root drink um i got some more root drink but yeah um yeah man i mean speaking of because it is it is cool hey jimmy go my black bag, so I can, so I can, uh, my black bag. Yeah, give me that. All right. Uh, so also today, for each day has a, a, a group of principles 
Uh, today is Kuumba, which is creativity. Also, the Maotic principle for today is order. The color is orange, and I didn't change my tag again. Um, the hermetic law is cause and effect. If you were born on this day, you were, your male name would be Kwame, your female name would be Ama. Um, right? So now, when we go to the seven principles and um, of the emotional meditation circle, which I got to get to. I've been all right. One, two, three, four, five, six. In Warlock, the day will be Jook or Job, a day to, to honor good character, to be just, honest, and righteous. In the Khan ethics, it will be strong character. Um, in traditional Yoruba, um, attributes of good character, the day will be Oju Inu, which means insight, right? You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just one for take these days and stop wasting energy and calling them the days that our enemies have taught us to call us. Yo, y'all got to understand, man. Our enemies are slick, man. We in a competition, right? And you can't win the game by following the strategy that your competition laid out for you. I mean, it's common sense. You can't, you know what I'm saying? The LA Lakers. Don't go and play Cleveland Cavaliers according to the way the, the Cleveland Cavaliers want the Lakers to play them. No, the Lakers come in playing the black. We're not. We have not been playing our game. Now, this is another thought that hit me. Right? We talk nation building. Saying we talk all this. Right? We talk. We right now the language right now is financial independence. You know what I'm saying? JC say what's better than one billionaire? Two. Right? <laughs> no, really. I mean, I mean, and we really got to think about that, right? Because I need y'all to understand. Once again, wealth is a community thing. Because I think you spoke a little bit on this, and when you was doing your, when you was just talking, brother, um, it's about community. If the community is not wealthy, one person cannot make a come up. We don't make come ups as individuals. We may come up as a team. We may come up as a tribe. Because if not, then this means that the whole tribe is going to end up draining the one. Right? So now, what I was thinking about this morning is in the conscious community, or whatever we call ourselves, those people that think differently than everybody else, those people that can look and see how uh, uh, um, a, a great pumpkin could be become president, and we understand, and we are able to feel it, and we're saying, look, how can we take advantage of it rather than just being mad, right? And those individuals, those individuals of us who've been studying our history and have seen some of the stuff that we've been doing, we done seen what worked, we done seen what haven't worked. What we have to start doing now is one, I ask you this, as far as tribe building, as far as nation building, how many of us are actually having elections in our city to elect our own government? Right. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because one of the things that hold us up is that we are actually practicing democracy, which is basically ruling through the mob. You can't rule a goddamn mob. We need to have representatives that represent us within each one of our communities, right? That goes up, that, that has been selected by us and, and have to come before the people and be re-elected or booted out. Where's our leadership? And I ain't talking about the leadership that others give us, that, 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 our, uh, that our opposing teams is giving us. Where's our leadership in our community? I ain't talking about pastors because these motherfuckers, they, they get to sit and just be there forever. I'm talking about individuals that we come together as groups and elect. Where's our treasurer for our community that we come together and we elect so that when we give them money, we can hold people accountable. You have been elected by the people. You can be removed by the people. You can be disappeared by the people. I don't know if that's what. <laughs> well, really? I mean, really, because we we want. I mean, and I ain't gonna say we the only one. But we don't. Uh, it, it, it's it's like this game's being played around us, and it's like we don't even want to participate. We talk about we want to build community, but we want to build it with everybody having a say. You know, chime in. Go oh, ahead, bro. You better you because you already know how to you know how to run it. I gotta, I gotta say this, man. I gotta say this because we are so 
listen, and this is what I'm talking about with creativity, with, with, the, with the functional mm. aspect of creation. Because the thing is, is that we spend so much time trying to reinvent the wheel because we ain't paying attention to other uh, innovations outside of our own conversations, outside of our own innovations. And that's what, once again, when it comes to community, understand the power of influence. Power of influence through our arts, through our creation. There's somebody who created Uber, who really, back when you and I were coming up, uh, I tell when we were kids, mm-hmm. they had Disney. They had Disney, right? They had who? They hang out at the park. Disney. A I T N E Y S. Actually, August Wilson. August Wilson has a play called Jitney that takes place in a little Jitney station. They're like cat taxi cabs, but you know, kind of off the off the book taxi. So if if uh, if I was at pick and pay or at the grocery store, uh, or my grandmother was at the grocery store, it'd be a jitney outside who would take two dollars and would put her bags in the car and take her home. That's what? that's what a jitney was. That's what. That's what Ubers are today. And see, this is what I need for people to realize. Like, I Uber now, all right? I Uber. I do Uber Eats. I do Lyft. And this is all in a matter of time that I have available in my day. I'm a 41-year-old, single, full-time dad. And when I got a babysitter, I go out and I Uber. But dig this. What's happened is that, or, because you got to be 21 years old to Uber. But what I'm saying to you is that if you look at the money that you can make off of the community that was built strictly through Uber, a 21-year-old individual can sign up to partner with Uber. On my best day, which I put four hours in on this particular day, I drove four people. I made $150 in one day working four hours. Now, if I did that five times a week for 52 weeks out the year, that's $39,000. Do I need a college degree to Uber? Do I need a high school diploma to Uber? No. I need to be 21 with a driver's license in a car. Wait, hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just so that everybody knows, he's just giving an example. Because I don't want the federal government to be coming after my brother because he's sitting up and telling on himself. All right, don't be not mention the money amounts, man, because they be listening in. But hold on one more second. I need to put this on. Can y'all hear that? Yeah. All right, we back on now, fam. All right, so let's see. All right, cool. Any more comments out there? But yeah, man, because I, hey, you hitting on some major, you hitting on some major shit. Shouts out to brother uh, Trevor Easley Senior. Shouts out to brother Allende Afri for joining the conversation. Um, let's see what else. Um, hey, now, but now we got to be kind of because 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 you saying that basically Uber took an idea that we have been hustling and using in our community for years as well. I mean, as well as yeah. being able to make the money, because I do remember stuff like that, right? And there's a lot of oh, shit. Yeah, and Uber, listen, Uber is just a spark. Let me tell you something that's happening that's really major in Cleveland right now. Um, if you've ever gone to Randall Park Mall, Randall Park Mall was just purchased by Amazon. Amazon is setting up their their depot there for like when you buy stuff from Amazon, now you can be an Uber for Amazon, which is called Amazon Flex, all right, to deliver packages that's being delivered from Amazon. They have drones that are delivering packages. That's being set up in Cleveland right now. Now, dig this. I have another friend who right now is getting his pilot license. So that he can be a drone operator. 
I don't know what it takes to get a pilot's license. But I know that the amount of money that comes with that industry, the amount of money that comes to the bottom feeders, just the drivers. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you do it, if you do that thing moderately, that's forty grand a year, and all you need to do is be twenty one years old and have a, a valid driver's license and a, and a way to get around. That community is the biggest thing out there right now. Now, that but community. Yeah. Go ahead. Now we, but we need to be aware of the Uber Uber Uberization of this entire economy. A, a lot of professions that were out there at one point in time will eventually begin to disappear because of companies yeah. like Uber and because of companies like Amazon. So family, we got to increase our hustle. And this brings us back to the fact that we need to start building some infrastructure so that we can start providing some of the services and some of the trainings to those individuals in our community because they will not be able to find jobs. Or they will be coming out of colleges after spending sixty, seventy thousand dollars and having to live in their parents' basement because the field they have become certified in no longer exists, right? You know, because we, because uh, we, we may need to question and challenge the college men. You know what I'm saying? Because we've been sold this idea that college is the is is, is a major thoroughfare into. Um, um, uh, uh, the middle class. That shit is not true. Because, you know, maybe out of the 100 friends that I went to college with, maybe about five of them might have made it into the middle class. And I know a lot of y'all gonna be mad at me for saying that because a lot of y'all honestly think that you're in the middle class, but you're not in the middle class. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, because we need to be honest about this. Most of us, even though we have a lot of stuff, are in poverty. And we don't want to admit this shit. You know so we go out and right. we go buy the latest shoes. We go out and we we able to get shit. You know what I'm saying? On credit, not really realizing that we're operating from poverty. We're just in America. We're able to be in a comfortable comfortable poverty, and we don't want to deal with that. This is why. There's another reason why I'm saying we need to start establishing true a true representative government within our community. So that we can actually start talking with some of these politicians and really start getting some of the resources that we need as a people so that we can start doing some of the things that we need to be doing right because a lot of the things that's holding us back is the fact that we have not been repaired as a people yeah we've been we've been preached to yes we don't allow a lot of stuff to come in we done been prayed for now we need to be paid for i don't need this 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 is the model for Jeremy. I don't need your prayer. I need your payments. God damn it, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us, I mean, really, really, man, people been think we've been allowing people to get away with praying for us for too damn no, nah, don't 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 pay for me, pay for me. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. Mm -hmm. As a people, we are old and we need to start collecting and because if, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. If we solicited that idea into the universe instead of trying to appeal to those who have stolen from us, instead of trying to appeal to those who uh, who the system is actually working for, because understand this, in that regard, as long as we keep fighting the fight like that, they have no incentive to stop to, to change their behavior, because they're the winner. We're the losers. We're mm -hmm. the belly aches. Mm -hmm. That is not the way to go about this conversation. You got to call on a higher power and you got to be peace within that because if you're not, if, if they know that you don't have a higher faith because your fear, your fear of them, see the faith that you have for anything, you have made him God. He's haven't we? Being, wait, wait, wait. Haven't we? Haven't we made them? Haven't we made them God? We, we 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 send our kids to their school so that they can get their degrees. They get certified by them. They get paid by them. They do everything for us. So have we not already done that? I'm just saying we need to set up a government structure so that we can challenge God and knock, knock him up off his motherfucking throne. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole piece is the only the only way this he they are able to do to us what we do, what they do. 
is because we allow it. We have no muscle. We have no no whereabouts to, 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 to challenge their power, right? But hey, I mean, actually we do. We just don't realize. We just don't realize. And that's my point. And that's my point. You look at my circumstances and how, you know, it, 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 hey, it took. Remember last time I was on your show, I was talking about the, the uh, telephone mediation that I recorded. And I listened to it a couple of times after that. And I realized the part where the prosecutor was shook because he realized that there was no, there was, there, there was an, a, a number of of fear in my heart. And I knew that what I was saying was true and so did he. And the piece is, is that when they said, well, you know, the, what you're suggesting, Mr. Hasbury, is that, you know, it, it's going to take more than just this case. We're going to have to change policy and this and that. And I said, well, it's time. And then the prosecutor immediately said, well, you know, I got like four or five more cases I got to deal with today. And, uh, and at that point, I knew they were hearing me loud and clear. Now, they're waiting for a response out of fear. They want to know who I'm going to show up with. You know what I mean? And thank you. Thank you, Brother High Tim, for uh, sticking to your word because you showed up. Oh, hey, up, said, hey, we, we, we structure our life with honor, Lord, and sacrifice, do we not? Do we not? I'm a motherfucker. I, I'm a Giami. I'm a Giami warrior. On, I'm a, a Giami nation builder on a warrior path, God damn it. I've been trained. I've been trained by the best to be the best. So, of course, if I say I'm going to do some shit, I'm going to do my damn just to make sure it happens. And that's what I we think. come from. And this is the point I'm saying. Like, for example, let me, let me. Let me get back into this government piece, right? Because the reason I'm saying that we need to set up these structures within our community is because one, it allows us to collect money, right? You have it allows us to elect those individuals that will oversee the money and to help them to, and help guide where the money will go and be spent on, right? And it holds the it holds it, it, it forms a structure where people where people can be held responsible. Because I'm telling you like this, we all pay taxes. We already are practicing this this shit already. So why not just bring it home and practice it amongst ourselves with our elders, our nation builders, and our warriors? Because I'm telling you like this right now. At first, the only thing that these organizations will be able to do is to, to make sure that there are celebrations going on in the community. There's like speaking engagements, information, and workshops in the community. Eventually, this type of organization will be able to develop jobs because more people will start investing in the process because it, it only makes sense. Because when an individual could walk into uh, uh, the mayor's office of the city and be like, look, dude, I got 10,000 votes, right? Ten, we, will, we will move your ass up out this office right now. If you do not give us what we need, we need this on the right. inside. This is how right. everybody else plays, right? I, I did it on another show. I was I was going through one of my favorite hated movies. I hate Godfather Part Three, but there's a scene in there that has always <laughs> stuck with me. I hate I hate it, but I got to watch it because that's part of my education. In Godfather Part Three. Why you hating on Andy Garcia, man? Listen, that, that was the worst shit. I, I mean, really. I mean, it was a good, it was a good horrible movie, right? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know what the fuck Andy Garcia is. I don't know whether he's Italian or I don't, I don't know, right? But his his character, he over, he overplayed it. He often, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I'm a, I'm gonna leave that alone. But the dude was talking to Andy Garcia. And and Andy Garcia said to him, he said, you 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 into financing and, and, and government and, and finances and stuff like that. I don't understand that shit. The elder looked at him and he said, do you understand guns? He said, yeah, I understand guns. He said, he said, finance is like a gun. Politics is knowing when to pull the trigger. God damn it, family, listen. Hey. That, that is, see, and y'all be thinking I be fucking around when I be looking at these movies, man. This shit, this, 
I got my I, I got more from watching movies than I got from fucking Ohio State. Think about that. Think hey. about what that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Hey, we just gotta we gotta learn to keep the keep our eye on the ball. All right. I mean, there's, there's some people that don't even know the game is being played. All right. Let's. Uh, I'm not talking about them. All right. But take the prime example of uh, uh, uh the cooking loans dude. All right. Um. The owner of the cab. He owned the cab. Right. Right. Now, he owned, let, let, let me just be real. Without holding any office, he owned half of Detroit. And right now, he's got Cleveland by the ball. Because if he doesn't get his hundreds of millions of dollars to renovate uh, where the cab play, then um, he's threatening to take the cab out of Cleveland. And guess who so, need him? Guess who need him real bad? <laughs> right? You know, I mean, because Detroit really could use the Cavs at this point in time, right? Oh my goodness! So I'm just saying we gotta we gotta pay attention to what's going on around us because it's not that change isn't happening. It's that that we're not on the winning team. No, it's not. Well, no, it's we're not on no team. See, it, it's change is happening, right? And we're not involved in where the changes are taking place. And that is where we could make a difference because it's like this, family. All I'm saying is we got all these conscious motherfuckers. We got all these intelligent people, but we have not voted a leader. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like I mean, cause uh, cause cause uh, the Asians do it. West Asians do it, Middle Asians do it. You know what I'm saying? For those those that speak my language, you understand what the fuck I'm talking about. We have not elected in Columbus or Cleveland a person that represents us. No, they go and they select who they want to represent us as leadership. We have not decided who our leadership is because you know why? Because we haven't we haven't had people throw their hats in the arena and say I'm running for this, right? Because we haven't provided a mechanism in which they could run. So that we can start having some type of governmental structure within our community. It's not that we have to be all all totally. It's it's not anti-American. Actually, actually, it's the ultimate in in American because it's like boom, we're taking the system that y'all using and we're applying it to our community, right? Because there's no way. Because really, there's no way. Because I'm sitting up here looking at a lot of our processes that, as far as when you do conscious shit. You know what I'm saying? Where everybody gets a vote, everybody gets to say, gets a say. You know what I'm saying? And it takes 30 minutes to start the goddamn meeting. And, and it takes two years to come to a fucking conclusion. But when right. you when you have right. more... And, and it's, it's, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know what, it's, and it's not that much work. I want you to understand that what you're talking about is being done right now. When you look at... Uh, uh, 2008, the, the, the real estate thing, right? What we should have learned by 2008 uh, from rich dad, poor dad, is that we don't want to be workers. We don't want to be specialists for other people. We want to be the owners, and we want to be the investors. Now, we've, we've, uh, we've plugged uh, 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 Naka a few times on, this, uh, on your show. Mm-hmm. And Naka, the... the uh, the one thing that I love about the Naka movement is that every city that Naka steps into, they have 100% of their members are voters. And that's one of the prerequisites to becoming a Naka member is that you're a registered voter. Because, yeah, if, you know, we don't have a Naka headquarters in Columbus, but we have enough influence on a national level to step into Columbus and say, all right, this is where we want the NACA headquarters so that we can make a, a, another 10,000 uh, homeowners right here from this network. Of, you understand what I'm saying? I hear so you. That's, uh, stepping out of renting from somebody else to having our own territory is really a matter of just taking a collective stance and saying that, Yes, that's what I want to do. Because through NACA, 
Nobody gets turned down. Nobody gets turned down for a mortgage. If you do what they ask you to do, you will get a mortgage. Oh, now let me get a mortgage approval. Now let me state this: what I'm talking about, because now NACA could be part of it. What I'm talking about is something that's organic and homegrown. And for some of you hustlers out there, we will not uh, that this type of organization cannot take money from external groups because that's like you know the United States don't get funding what supposedly they are supposed to be. A government cannot take funding from external people. You understand what I'm saying, Chaka? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if if external people fund your government, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They control your government. So they are not allowed to take funds from anything but the people. This has to be a total represent, re representation of Let the culture and the people. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. Some, they... Wait, somebody gonna be wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I gotta do a commercial real quick. Somebody gonna be mad because hey, hey, I'm drinking on sipping on that lemon lime. I'm trying to bottle it up, but brother Shock is holding me on the show a little bit longer, and I need another sip. Um uh, right now I'm down to about seven bottles of that lemon lime and ginger, that Justice League. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna sip a little bit more of that root. But I'm about to get in here into the kitchen and do the thing. This show has been brought to you by G and J that Ambrosia. You ready to get on the show? I don't like Okay, my babies are hungry, so we're gonna have to make this show quick. We, oh, ain't quick. We've been on for an hour. I want to thank all those people that's tuning in. But go ahead, bro. Go ahead, go ahead, Sean. You know what, man? You know what? I was I, I got lemon lime on my mind, my sister. I, I don't even remember where I was at it. And hey. I use the whole lemon, I use the whole lime, seeds, wine, the whole thing. So you get the entire nutrients of lemon, lime, and ginger. Oh, you brought me right back. Now I know what I was going to ask. There you go. Here it is. Can we sell our products and services to other groups? Oh, you mean as a, as a, like as a government? Yes. Hell yeah. That's called trade. You know what I'm saying? See, see, see what goes on in our community now is that we, since we don't control our, our territory, anybody could come in and they could come in and bring their products and export our money for free. Once we establish, hey. once we establish as a government, right, we can, we can establish a territory. Like we could say, um, um, let's say we just start moving into the short north and we start taking it over. In order for a store to open in the short north and maybe even continue functioning in the short north, they would have to be okay by us. And the only way for them to be okay by us is if they are doing kickbacks, if they are paying tariffs for being able to bring their shit in and export our money. Right? Right now, we don't have okay, nobody fine. looking out for our interests. You know, some people call it extortion. But I call it governmental functions and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because they do it. Right. And see, that's just, that's it, it's a it's a major point I want that 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 just came to me. I what I didn't even say all that to make this point. But what I'm realizing is is that sometimes we are so focused on making our products and services exclusive to our community that we don't see how what how our work is equitable groups outside of us and oh. that and, and there's and, and that's majorly I, I think that's a whole different conversation no I not really open that up not really because the, the, the issue is family once we start producing i mean we already got shit that's international i mean really when it comes down to it as, as black people we influence international um um taste you know what i'm saying we we, we got international products it's just a matter of that the, the that are we have not found a way to monetize that yet. You know what I'm saying? It would be foolish for us to just say, I'm only doing business with black folks. You know what I'm saying? When you got customers like for example with Ambrosia, it'd be foolish for me to sit up here and be like, oh, this is only for black folks. No, I say it's for family and friends, right? Family and friends. Right. Friends, I got a lot of different type of friends. I got a lot of different type of people. 
that like to drink. And bros, I say family and friends because I want people who are gonna enjoy my shit and not get on Facebook and say some stupid shit. You know, I mean, because you know how people are. You got haters everywhere. It'd be stupid for me to sit up here and be like, let's form a government and we don't have trade. Every government has trade. Nigeria has trade with other countries. Ghana has trade with other countries. What I'm saying as a community in Columbus, who do we have trade with that benefits the black folks in Columbus as a whole, not as individuals? See, because this is where this is where they get us at. Because we operate in the marketplace as individuals while they operate in groups. This is why you can't have a black hair care store compete with the Koreans because the Koreans is working as a community. When we open up a store, we open up a store by our damn self. The right. Koreans got a government. They got rules. They got codes that they run by. So that group is always going to outdo a black individual. I don't give a fuck if you sell it to the black community. Because your money will not stretch as long as the Koreans. The Koreans will go with a drop longer than you can. Right. That's because we're not working. We're not taxing the Koreans for selling black hair. Motherfuckers, you selling products to you selling products to our people. You need to make you 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 need to pay some taxes. We don't have to call them taxes because I know that's called extortion. But I don't give a fuck because United States government extort me every two weeks. I'm, my I'm, my check come come like every two weeks, and it's time for us to start extorting motherfuckers that's making money off of us. If Amazon want to build a motherfucking company, a factory, or a, a storefront in one of our communities, the motherfuckers need to pay taxes. Not just to the government, but they need to pay it to the community that's dead. The city of Columbus, if they allow motherfuckers to open business here, if Columbus is getting money from them, Columbus needs to either break us over, off our money, or we need to go get it from those people. That's called government. That's called managing your people. That's called protecting what's yours. Can't nobody come up, right. you know what I'm saying? That's, see, this is how we do it in the community, right? And nobody will ever run a house like this. Our community is run like this. I got a, somebody I don't even know. They just walk up in my house and take one of my bedrooms. They can sleep there. And, you know, I'm going to let them do that because that's the that's the right thing to do. How many of us would allow somebody to do that that we don't even know, right? We don't allow somebody from a whole other culture, somebody I don't even know, come and just lay down in your house. You going to allow them to do that? But we allow no. people to do that in our community. That's not good business. No. That don't make no goddamn sense. You know what I'm saying? How is it that we have a community that's 98% black, but none of the businesses that's prospering in that community are black? How is that? How is how, matter of fact, how is it that 98% of one of these communities that I'm I'm in Columbus right now, that 98% of the people in the community could be black? And only like five percent of the people own five percent of the people that own the property is black. How? How is that fair? How is that right? How is that just? Man, come on, dude. You know what I'm saying? And we gotta start asking. We, you know what I'm saying? I might be, I might not be asking the totally right questions, but what I what I, what I am clear on is that we do need to have some type of representation that's looking out for us. Because nobody is looking out for us. We're dependent on Columbus. We're, we're dependent on Franklin hey. County. We're dependent on the United States government to look out for us when they have shown us historically that they have never, ever looked out for us. When they open the door for us, we they make sure that the door is open for everybody. They, they lump us in with all minorities. When in fact, the fact of the matter is, we are the only non-immigrant class in this country, and we need to be recognized as that shit. We are the hey, true Americans. Let me, let me. Let me just say this then. When it comes to our community, if we don't have ownership, that and this is this, to answer your question, Hatem, I think that this is the answer. The, the, the reason things is the way they are now is because if we don't own our community, then our community is simply a rooming house. So. Do I feel some kind of way about somebody just walking up in my house and taking a room next to mine? Do I have any say if I have not declared ownership of my community? That's number one. That's number one. If we're not owning it, then is it our community? If we're not taking, if we as a people 
are not accepting ownership, then what is our community with? All right, now hold on one second. I need to read some comments because they're coming in. I don't know. I, I'm trying this a new way. Uh, Brother Kwame said, okay, hold on. Uh, a brother by the name of Trevor Easily Sr. He said, well, no, Kwame uh, said something because we said something about August Wilson. Uh, August, you said something about August Wilson play when you was talking about um, what you called him? Jitney. Jitney. Um, so y'all not hearing when I play the thing, so I won't do that no more. Um, Trevor Easley Sr. said, we didn't hear what you just played. All right. I apologize. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning. All right. Um, he mentioned something about, I want to read this. Uh, he said Uber is a legal version of gypsy cabs. Now, I do remember gypsy cabs, right? Is that is that the jit, jitney that you're talking about as well? A gypsy yeah, cab? jitney. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to uh, I just want to acknowledge when people come on and they're making statements because uh, uh, homeboy got on here and he he um, he said uh, upper low class, right? You know what I'm saying? Because America gets us on illusion and allows us to fool ourselves to get us to think that we're really doing something when we're really not. We just imitate men. You know what I'm saying? And right. it's, you know, and, and right. it's, 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 it's the fuck. Um, Brother Kwame, they are the same. Jitney and Jit. Okay, cool. Brother Kwame just clarified. He said Jitney and Gypsy are the same. And Uber just basically took an idea that just, I mean, because I want you to think about this, family. People take our ideas. This is how you know shit. This, this is how you know how the world works, right? Family, think about this. They take our ideas. They make new laws, and they're able to make money off of our ideas, right? Gypsy cats and shit, right? They're going to take it now. It's called Uber, right? Now, but I want you all to think back farther. Do you all remember the lottery? Do you know how long black folks been doing lottery? We... Right. We was doing, listen, we so cold, see, because we don't even know, we don't even understand. We so cold with it that we was, we was doing lottery on plantations. Do y'all understand that shit? I want y'all to understand, this is how deep the hustle is with you, right? We was doing, we was doing lottery when we was in chains. I mean, I want you to think about this. You come out from working in the sun all day, you only got a few pennies, and somebody is coming around hustling numbers. How do I know this? Because I think it was Denmark Vesey. Now, somebody out there, I know somebody out there is a better historian than me. Either it was Gabriel Prosser or Denmark Vesey. They won their freedom because they won the goddamn lottery. Do y'all, this, this is how hard your people, this is how hard our people been hustling, dog. You can't stop the hustle. Chains can't stop it. You can't stop the hustle. This is, so now, and I'm saying the lottery because at one point in time, the lottery was a major portion of our community where we was making money, and they all of a sudden made this shit legal. And now, go and give me one of those dollars. Give me a dollar. Um, and now all of a sudden, you got the Ohio lottery, you got the Michigan lottery, we got all these lotteries. They took they took our shit, and made it legal, and now they making money up off of it. And we need to have a body that could go and confront these motherfuckers. Be like y'all, hey, y'all owe us about a trillion dollars. From that shit, we ain't even talking about. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even talking about reparations yet, right? The cotton gin. I want my motherfucking money, right? I want my money for the cotton gin, right? I want my money for the stoplights and shit. You know what I'm saying? We need to start collecting. All right, but go ahead, Chuck. Give me another one off. I'm sorry, I'm eating olives right now. No, 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 and yo. It's so, it's, it's, that's the thing, Hot Tim, is that as many ideas as I've had throughout the years, I've, 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 I've lived long enough to at least have 10 really good ideas that I, I pitch to my circle, and try to motivate to my circle, and then within three months to even six months sometimes, I see my idea emerge out of somebody else's circle because they had the resources and they had the, the collective belief Within the within the few who have the skills to pull it together. Hold on, Chaka. Because I'm yeah. going to, I have to say this in defense of my people. Right? We got ideas, right? 
And it's not the fact that you didn't have the belief. It's the fact that we didn't have the resources. And one of the things that we right. need to always be able to do as black men, like, like Donald Trump, is to make sure that we're able to point out why we weren't able to accomplish what we was able to do. Right? We didn't have resources. Right. Because for the last 400 years, your people have been getting their ass kicked. Your people have been robbed. We've got to be able to point the finger back. We have not been presented the opportunities because our ancestors was not able to lay down the framework for us to be able to take advantage of the opportunities. We are starting behind while other other individuals have something to do from. Do you see me doing my show? Do not make me show off on this thing. Get a, hey, did you hear me? You know I'm on here. Get go upstairs. Or go down the basement. I'm sorry, it's real time here at Geomic Journey. Check your children on a consistent and, and regular basis. This has been brought to you by the Afrocentric, um, the Afrocentric way of raising children. Y'all go so there. Y'all see them merrily, merrily walk on about their business. All right, so go ahead, Shaka. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying, man, because the, the issue is, one, we need to accept blame when we need to accept it, but also we need to also be willing to point out where some of the shit, where some of the shit uh, um, um, started because we aren't able to compete with a lot of individuals because we have not been repaired. And I'm not just talking about well, let's, 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 and this is how it goes full circle, man. Let's take let's take uh uh the Jinyami house concept, oh right? Oh god. Now <laughs> go ahead. If she would listen, ouch. Go ahead. We had Uber. Oh my I god. Mean, oh my god. Nigga, are you serious? See, I now you just took that shit somewhere I never you but you know what, Chaka? We could do we could do that shit now. Oh my god, I didn't even think about that shit. See, you should have kept that to yourself because that is no really, Shaka. Think about this. Think about this. Listen, I got the shit written down because I showed them how we could do it if they was working at McDonald's. You just threw a whole nother angle on there. Listen, we could do some serious community building and put an ebook together. You know what I'm saying? Evil. This is how. And on top of that, use use the Uber experience for outreach. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I tell him, I'm an you outreach got... worker for, in, in the Uber car. You understand what I'm saying? In my car, every time I pick somebody up, I got at least five minutes to tell them what I do in the community. It's like speed dating for nation builders. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. Hey, do you got flyers? A brochure. My my yo, my my license plate is Black Phoenix. What's their first question when they sit down in my car? Why your license? What, what's, what's a Black Phoenix? Do, hey, you giving them the, the money you gave me? Cause that shit was cold. I still got that in my wallet. Yes, yes. I didn't hit the lottery yes. two times since I had that shit in my wallet. Get out. I mean, ain't no big money, you know what I'm saying? But listen, one time I was, listen, I was fasting. I was on a fast for 21 days, right? I walked in. I wanted to buy something. My money was fucked up. So I walked in. I didn't have no money. So I pulled the ticket out of my pocket. And the amount of money that I won on the ticket was the exact amount that I needed to get what I wanted. Not suggesting wow. that you play... Not suggesting that you play the lottery, but I'm telling you, once I put this dude's this dude magic money in my pocket, right? I mean, shit was going good. You know what I'm saying? He got his products, I got my products. The whole object of us doing business together is to bring value to people's lives. That's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose. One, he gave, I picked him up when he went to court and I dropped him and his son off somewhere. He gave me his magic money. Right, his his Black Phoenix money. I put it in my wallet. I put that right beside the money I got in my thing. Now, a lot of y'all not on it. Y'all like you into that superstitious shit. No, I'm into vibrations, motherfucker. Listen to me. Listen, 
when anything that you allow into your life brings a vibration so this means that when you bring a piece of paper into your life anything you bring into your life brings a vibration now depending on how yeah. you focus on that vibration right it will continue attracting other vibrations like it he gave me something out of love he gave me something promoting his thing i put it in my wallet and i look at it every time i open my wallet so i throw energy on that vibration the vibration increases is able to, it, to attract into my life what i need i call it a um into it, 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 i call it a um i got a i got i had a, i had a, a a word for it because i was going i was i was putting something together uh, um i can't think of it it's a it's a device that attracts something to you brother kwame shot in whenever i find myself disappointed with us elder brother no will remind me of just how traumatic our experience was we have to always be able to go back and remember that we have not been repaired we have not been repaired um uh, uh in the five parts of our being intuitionally we're fucked up mentally we fucked up emotionally we fucked up spiritually we fucked up physically we are still the um suffering right some of us have been able to heal some of these things but as a country the country where we stay the country where we live has not reached out to try to help us overcome some of the trauma that we have experienced. And I know some of y'all like that's not their responsibility. Then I got a question for you. Why the fuck you paying taxes then? If it's not their responsibility. Every year we got to pay taxes for roads. We got to pay taxes for all this shit. Everybody getting help but you. It is their responsibility. And we need to hold their feet to it. And we need to hold our politicians to it. Because it's their responsibility to help repair the damage that has been done to 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 the real to some of their citizens we understand that we are generational people so what happened to me five generations ago effect, it's affecting me now brother Kwame say a magnetic it the if the word is not magnetic attraction brother Kwame wrote magnetic attraction the word is not magnetic I'm gonna, I, I got to find it because I called it a um um it's a device that I was, I, it'll come to me. But you know what, I tell them that's always, that's always been, and that's always been in your spirit. Um, we are, uh, back in the day, back in the day, you were big into carrying anchors. Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and during that time, I remember, I remember uh, another brother pouring some prayer rocks into my hand. To this day, those those rocks are still somewhere in the box. But I it, it was it was an anchor to, you know, um and I remember to the point where the day that my grandmother uh at her funeral, I remember at her gravesite picking up a stone. And I, I got that stone on my mantle today. And every time I touch it, it brings back it brings me back to my grandmother's virtue. It, it, it brings me back into that centeredness that my grandmother's life brought into my own. Um, same thing uh, with, you know, anyone who's, who's ever, um, you know, Shriners. Shriners, we, we're big into the Blackstone because that represents our nobility. A, a, a smooth, uh, a smooth stone. You understand? Right. But when it comes to having an anchor, see, and, and now, remember. now you get into the language. An anchor it changes you to a certain thing. You know what I'm saying? We have to start. See, and that was something that was. I mean, because we had talismans in in all of our cultures. You know what I'm saying? This, basically, we're talking about using ancient things and it's not about bringing good luck or bad luck or magic into your life if because it's about keeping you anchored in a certain mind state and right now family we have other people that are are producing um mind states for us that are not healthy this is why we sick this is why we struggle with obesity this is why we str um struggling this is one of the reasons we struggle with poverty because they don't, they have us not focusing on the right things. Right. I'm, I'm still trying to think about the device that I had come up. Um, 
It's an in, it's an intention manifested an intention manifestation device. That's what I call it. IMD intention manifestation device. When he gave me that dollar, that dollar was an intention manifestation device. We have been using these type of devices for generations. It just grounds yeah. us into a certain mind state so that every time we touch the stone, every time we see it, but what starts to happen is we start losing the power because we start believing in the stone rather than the idea behind the stone. It's the same thing that's happening to us with our religion. Most of us, we get caught up in the story of the religion rather than the principles of the religion, right? This is what the religion and this is what the myths and this is what the stories of the religion is supposed to bring us to. It's supposed to bring us back around to the principles. What are the principles of Christianity? Now, those are, what are the principles of Islam? What are the principles of the comedic beliefs? What are the principles? See, we, we, we're not able to get to the principle. And this is why I'm talking about forming a government and not based on no religious bullshit, but based on principles. Right? Our people, we right. need truth. We need justice. Right? We need reciprocity. To serve. We, need to, we need to be able, be able to facilitate the reciprocity that is supposed to come back to us from what our ancestors did in the past. We built this motherfucker, and motherfuckers is telling us to pull ourselves up by our bootstrap. Motherfucker, you got my boots. You got my strap. You got my whole suit. I want it back. Ladies, I know y'all not going outside. See, my, uh, I'm, I'm having a good time. Ladies, <laughs> close, the, close the door. Did y'all take a bath? Gina, go upstairs and take a bath. So we get out of here. All right. Man, I'm enjoying myself. All right, so right now, I'm live on Giami Journey um, Radio. We also live on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? I have my beautiful daughters. That are hungry. I got to go on the fit. Can you, um, can you make them something to eat, please? My son, clean, getting dressed. We got to go to the barber shop. Um, but yo, family, the, the bottom line. Hold on, brother. Oh, is it is the emotional emancipation? Me? Oh man, my wife is working today, and I. It won't be no emotional emancipation, brother Kwame, if I come with these kids. With my daughters, Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to stop first. Good God Almighty! If I bring my daughters, there will be no emotional emancipation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all right. Um. All right. So, but, oh, but go ahead, brother. I'm listening. I'm listening. Oh, I'm listening to you, man. This is this is this is great. I'm just saying, I'm man. Actually... Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually really motivated to drive down to Columbus either today or tomorrow and see what you're talking about. Like, and, 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 and just, I mean, you talking about the she that piece right there. I think that a major piece is right now, and, and what I love that I'm hearing is that I've been preaching from the black, you know, from the black phoenix aspect. I've been preaching that we have to form the vanguard, and it, and it is, and it is one of the things that. From um, from a level of study is what you have always brought, you know. So right now, I think that your purpose and my purpose are are really necessary um, for these things to actually work out right now, because you are taking people through the lessons. The education is key when it comes to what it is that we're building. The vanguard is necessary for any real social movement. It is the artists that move the masses, That's not true. the politics. Hey, let me say this. this well, let me say this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because I thought I was doing but I have to send shots out to my brothers, right? The Willoughby's, the Willoughby's, I'm understanding, I got up this morning, I looked at my Facebook page, and I'm hearing that the Willoughby's have took a converted um, travel on one of those big uh, steel things and, yeah. and open up a shop on Mount Vernon and 17. So I'm going to drive by there today, right? But now I have to find a way every two weeks to at least stop by their, their, their facility and, and purchase some of their products. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. 
So we talking about building, right? That them brothers definitely got tribe. They they got a tribe concept, right? They got a rallying call for their tribe, and now they have established a headquarters. So I have I have to go and support my fans, right? So yeah, they're doing it. They they're doing it. But I'm talking about what I'm talking about is I ain't nowhere near going towards where I'm at, right? Where I, where I want to be. I'm doing some work, but you come see it. But the piece that I'm talking about is now I'm just putting out a challenge to all the nation builders out there. We need to form governments within our city. I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if you got a house or not. We need to form government so that we could so that we can so that one we can take care of the celebrations that's happening in our community and around these celebrations we start raising money. And in raising money, we have places where we could keep our money where we know it's gonna be safe. So I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? So that we could start really doing some building. But yo, brother Shaka, uh, I'm not going to belabor the point. I'm going to end right here. And I'm going to send shots out to all my family out there. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and taking the time. I'm going to send shots out to my brother PJ. I know you can't see this, but know that the love is here. All right. We building, we building, we building. And I want to thank you, Shaka, for tuning in. I want to thank brother Kwame for consistently supporting what I do on a daily toast. I know there's been a long toast, an hour, 26 minutes, and this is the fourth take. And let me explain why it's the fourth take. It's the fourth take because it was some nation building business and the sister felt that I needed to be on the call and she kept calling, fucking up my show because I needed to be on the call. She felt I needed to be on the call and it was important enough for her to be like, oh, what you doing? And get on this call. And I got on the call and once I did the call and handled that business, I was able to do the show without any issue. Now, family, when you start dealing with your ancestors, you start saluting your ancestors, your ancestors are going to make sure that you are able to be in the place that you need to be when you need to be in. Even if you don't think it's the right place, right? Now, Brother Shock is out there hustling the Uber. He ain't making as much money as he said on this show. So for those of you that's listening and you work with the IRS, he made about twenty five dollars in the day. Right. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you, man. Come over here and sit down. I Come over here. You. Come over here. Put the protection anyway, I know. Right. I'm listen, dude. I'm I'm paying back a federal government bill right now. That's you know, them motherfuckers, hey, they put out a file on me that was about you know what I'm saying, that was about that thick. They knew all of my transactions for the last two years. They was they able to do that shit. They're not able to tell me how much they owe me from slavery. That's a bullshit. All right? Come on now. Give me my goddamn money. You know what I'm saying? And, and then on top of that, nobody is talking to them like this. Listen, you don't have to give me money. But make my existence for the next three or four generations tax free. Give me time to catch up. You know what I'm saying? See, because some people are like, well, give us free education. No, fuck, you keep your education. You know what I'm saying? Y'all keep that shit. Just stop taxing me. Stop taxing me federally, locally. Just stop taxing me. Allow one, allow me to get my whole motherfucking check. Right? Give me free medical care. For the next three to five right. generations. You know what I'm saying? So that I can have a head start. So I no, not even a head start. So that I can at least be able to 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 put away money. So that I could build up the next generation. I don't have to be rich. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know, I mean, because like I said, man, because a lot of people don't understand, right? And I and I'm and I keep on saying I'm on end. But if you are a billionaire, you got to have at least two hundred millionaires up under you. And those two hundred millionaires got to have at least four individuals that's making at least ten million dollars or above. And those four individuals got to have eight people below them. You know what I'm saying? Doing single million dollars. You know what I'm saying? From one to nine million dollars. And and those those eight have to have sixteen people up under them in the hundred thousand dollar area, five hundred thousand to a, to almost a million dollars. Then those individuals got to have people up under them. See, it, it, we got the structure, but no, the way we got it is, I'm making a billion, and the closest person to me that looked like me. He's making sixty thousand dollars. What? This is how we think. How the fuck? It's community, man. It's trying. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, this is brother Hot Tim, sending shouts out to you. We did our toast. 
We toasted up the ancestors big. Today is Mama Malika Day. Shouts out to Mama Malika. We 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 got you, baby. We got you. We drinking ambrosia over here. Some other people out there is gonna listen to this and they're gonna remember you because those of you that have been influenced by Mama Malika, take a drink for her. Whether it's a drink of water or a drink of liquor, pour some out for her, right? Because she poured them out for us when she was alive. You know what I'm saying? Very strong woman. So we salute my Malika. With that, I say Ashe. 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 All right, peace, Shaka. Peace, y'all. All right, those of you that's on Spreaker, we are out. Great show. Let's do this. Let's see if it works. Symbol production. Where we strive to blow up your old paradigm.